Here's Grandma Stewart making out the check for the new present. $1,000. This is Grandma Stewart's birthday, but she's making a check out to me. Her birthday present to me. Here's Aunt Sadie Curtis making out the check for the auto gyro. $500. I'll bet it's a rubber one. Watch it bounce. Here's Grandma Barnes. Just had her 50th wedding anniversary. In just a minute, we're going to show you Grandpa. He got a medal. Here's Grandpa Barnes. He's the fellow that got the medal for being married 50 years. Well, Pa, this is a break for you. I have to do the talking today. I had hoped that you were going to be the one to get stage fright. But instead of that, why, the batteries didn't show up and it's on, the joke's on me. Stay down that time. This is the kid that's getting his picture taken. Ought to be doing the talking himself. But now he's open. Now we got it all right. Well, look at that dog, Pat. Didn't we have a good dinner, Archie? Wings and apple pie and all birth of good candy. I tell you, here's to the Stewart. Here's the old gang getting the Christmas tree ready for Santa Claus rather interested to see how this picture will come out. I've changed the lens from the lens which came on the camera to the Taylor Cook lens. This is Grandpa and Ann trimming my Christmas tree. Ann's Christmas tree is at our house this year. And this is Mary's tree. Grandpa's trimming it, so... Can you hear it, Mary? This film that I'm using is the regular panchromatic film I'm using three photo flood lamps uh, at a distance of about 11 feet with an exposure of F28. Here's all Annie, Benny, and Mary are doing their stuff. This has been a wonderful vacation for the kids. The weather's been clear and cold every day, down around about 20 degrees. Every day they've been able to get out. It's certainly been a mighty fine holiday period. Come on, Ann, let's see you go. Step on it. That's a boy. Yay, boy. One down. Now, get out there and let's see you go. Come on, turn around, go fast. Here comes old Mary I. January 26, 1935. A week ago today, we had the biggest snowstorm that I can remember. It's been seven days and it's still good and deep. I stand corrected on that 1935. They tell me it's 1936. Here's how the gang spends Sunday afternoons on the first Sunday in March, 1936. How's this for a Sunday in March? Going to take this one to show Uncle Roy Curtis next summer when he's taking money in so fast on the ferry boats that they can't count it. What his old river looked like in March, 1936. Boy, if old Henry Hudson had come up the river today, Instead of when he did, he had to have this kind of a boat. What going? Once upon a time, in bygone days, there were three bears, so the storybooks say. They lived in a wood by the big fir tree, in a cozy little house, <laughs> just built for a tree. <laughs> the great big bear was big and strong. His voice was gruff, and his hair was long. The teeny weeny bear, he was so small, he hardly looked like a bear at all. The middle-sized bear was just between, and not too fat and not too lean. In another little house, so we've been told, lived a pretty little girl with hair of gold. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday! Now what do we do? We blow down one breath? Yep. 
And go out in one breath, doesn't it? Yeah. And what happens if you don't blow it out in one breath? You don't get away. Well, now, here we go, all three of them. Now. Well, I guess we get that one all right, don't we? Yeah. That's fine. Okay. We'll let Mommy cut it now. Ann, come on up here and let's see the reading lesson. We'll have a little lesson in reading. How'll that be? Okay. What are we going to read about? A little brownie. A little brownie? All a right. A little brownie. I am a little brownie. I am a little brownie. Now, you said that once. What's this one say over here? I like to hide in the house, in the house. Is that right? That's right, Colonel. There is a tree grows right near our house. Been there quite some time. The tree is a slippery elm tree, and it's very hard to climb. But when my wife gets after me, in that tree I roost. I can go up it just like a healthy squirrel. I never need a boost. One day a woodsman come in our woods to chop my refuge down and split it up into kindling wood just to sell it all around town. I said to him, my friend, go chop an oak, a birch or pine, but leave this slippery Elm of mine, cause it's the only tree my wife can't climb. Oh, woodman, spare it for me.
exposure F11, made with ordinary lens. Same picture, same stop, only with a telephoto lens attached. Now we place a hood over the telescope lens and we'll see if this takes away the objectionable fog that we've been getting on all these telescopic pictures. Now we'll try one at F35 with a telescope shaded by the porch. The same picture with a hood over the telescope. And now for a parting shot, we'll set her at F22 and aim her up in the sky at an old cumulus cloud up there. I neglected to say that this shot is made with the hood on. Decoration Day, 1936. Just 10 years ago this afternoon, I took my first moving pictures here on this same spot. I'm rather anxious to see what 10 years does to my appearance and 10 years does to the pictures, or rather the quality of them. about a year ago, uh, you and I had a reading lesson. Yeah. And uh, you did me a little reading. Now, let's see if you've improved any in the past year. Start right here.
Well, now, that's, that's pretty good there, son. And uh, you're doing a little better, I think. Hi, right, Mary. Here, Pat. Here, Pat. Come on up here. Here. Come on. Come on up. Ann's going to read. All right, Ann. Now, Patsy's up here. What do you say we read Pat a story, huh? The plantation was called Goodwood because of many wonderful trees that live that grow in it. And have lived there for years and years. Patsy's real name was... You mean Pat the dog? No, Pat. Oh, I thought she meant Pat the dog. Well, Ann, you do pretty good. I guess that'll... Pat's real name. Good morning, Mrs. Puppy Dog. And how are you today? Would you like some tea? Yes, thank you. Here's some tea. Very good. Dear Puppy, Pat's real name December the 20th, 1937. A week ago today, these same two little girls were up skating. We had about four inches of ice on the Politan, uh, well, where we knock all the golf balls in, that little lake there. George Northup knows that very well. Ann says these lobsters that they've got here 
were advertisements from the restaurant where we ate this known. And here's the old lobsters, right high and dry, where they were washed up by the waves. Here we are at Miami Beach on the 20th day of December, 1937. And looking in this direction, we see old Grandma Stewart out on the beach. Our trunks didn't show up today, so that gave three girls three good excuses for buying three new bathing suits. What do I mean, girls? Well, two girls and a lady then. Or should I say a woman? Well, never mind. Skip it. Here comes a couple of lobsters. The red ones, I mean. Anybody could see that. The other ones are not lobsters. They're crabs from being crabby star. Way out yonder in the distance is a coastwise vessel. I got the telescope on and maybe it'll bring it in close enough so that you can just see it in the distance out on the horizon. If Mary will get out of the way, that's better. That's fine. I wouldn't be surprised if that boat turned around out there and came in. It's just about the place where they turned to head in. Maybe not, maybe she'll go on down to South America. And still leaving the telescope on, we see old Grandma Stewart down there with a very white back, getting her first taste of the salt water down here at Miami. The kids already are beginning to show the tan, exposure to the sun. Yesterday I told the kids that we'd take them up for a ride in this little machine, but Mary was all set to go, and Ann, she set up a big howl. The only thing I could figure was that she she was remembering the von Hindenburg pictures. Here goes the Stewart family in for their afternoon dip, following which we'll go up and play nine holes of golf. I just looked in the viewfinder here and I find that the salt water spray has clouded the viewfinder and I hope that when these pictures come out they don't show that the lens has been too badly discolored or fogged up. Ah boy, they're having a good time. Here's old grandma hanging on the lifeline, Ann and Mary, and then we'll look up overhead. Ah boy, here we pan around right up overhead. See what we see. And we look over here in this direction. There's another little area. Ah, there it goes right behind the Zeppelin. Now we'll come down, down, down again and return you to the Stewart. I wonder if Doc Allett remembers the one that uh, we took down Atlantic City. Well, we'll have to show him this one. It was the day before Christmas and all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even Rat Mouse. Ain't it a shame? Here's a poor little girl, and she just hasn't any feet. Too bad. Old Lady Stewart and her daughter Mary swimming out to sea. And now on December the 24th, we'll aim the camera in the general direction of Newburgh, New York, and see what we shall see. What a blankety blank fool I am to come out here, try to show you what the bottom looks like and get the camera all wet. Well, the harm's done now, so we'll see what we get anyway. It's the doggone Riley. Uh oh, there's a bad one. It's the doggone Riley. You probably can't see anything anyway. Christmas, unusual for this time of year, water and war. Well, Ann, you having a good time? Yes. You are, huh? Are you how, do you like, how do you like this for Christmas? Well. Just a 
good way to spend it. Hey, here comes the big one. Are you homesick or are you dog? You're not a bit homesick, are you? What's old Helen Ann Brown doing today, do you suppose? I don't know. I bet she's up skating on the Pilot and Club, don't you? Yeah. Aren't you in Canada? She hung her stocking on a palm tree. Did you hang your stocking on a palm tree? No. I don't know whether you fellas can see them or not, but here's some big sharks down here. Get my camera loaded quite quick enough to get them from the other side. Boy, there's some old whalers down there. Man, you talk about loading a camera. If I didn't load this one and nothing flat this time up in this airplane, boy, with those big sharks down below, I just want to let you fellas get a picture of them. But I guess maybe they got on the wrong side before I could get into action here. Now we'll give you a look at Miami Beach from the other angle. We've been out to sea, had a look at the sharks. Now we'll let you see Miami Beach, but you can't see all the sharks there. Last week, we showed you the first attempt at golf. Today is the first of the Andy of the annual fishing trip to Orange Lake. Now we'll look out in another direction and see the other half of the Grand Street Gang after the little fellas from the deep. Mary just lost her, her jobber, so they've got to haul up the anchor and row out after it. Anchor's away there, old boy. Avast, you landlubbers and all that sort of nautical rot. The two little girls in this boat have requested that we show you what their daubers look like. And on this side, we find Ann Nunu bobbing in the waves. The other boat has drifted away, so we'll put on the telescope and have a look at them at a little closer range. Well, girls, you fellows aren't having very good luck. Let's see your disgusted faces. Is that the way you look when you're disgusted with fishing, huh? Well, that's a pretty good one. The other boat just caught the first fish Oh, man, he fell overboard. Boy, well, anyway, we got the telescope on, but I think we'd had to have a microscope to see that baby. We'll send him back to his mother. And now back to the golf game again. Old Annie Benny at the age of seven, learning to putt. And here's Maria trying her hand.
It said Ann. Well, it said Cornell Company. It, it said Anna. Oh, no, it says Archie. Of daddy, of daddy taking pictures of me, of me taking pictures of daddy. 